Emperor Hale Selassie is often regarded as being more important to Ethiopia's modern history than anyone else in Africa. He served as Ethiopia's regent from 1916 to 1930 before ascending to the throne on November 2 and reigning for over 45 years. The feudal system of government prevented Ethiopia from keeping up with the economic and technological advancements occurring elsewhere, and the country's lack of advancement eventually led to his overthrow even though Ethiopia was able to avoid colonization and remained a political leader and symbol of African independence throughout his reign. Emperor Selassie exemplified one-man rule more than the majority of other autocrats, ultimately to his own disadvantage and the advancement of his country. In the end, his efforts to modernize the country's education system also contributed to his downfall as foreign educated students returned to Ethiopia seeking reform. Calls for change by students, the military, and other members of the ruling family, combined with the emperor's decreasing mental awareness, led to his abdication in 1974. Hale Selassie can be considered the world's last emperor who held true political power. Hello guys and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Please be sure to subscribe and click the notification icon in order to get notified on future uploads. In this video, we'll be looking at the rise and fall of one of Africa's greatest leaders of all time, Hale Selassie. Hale Selassie, the first original name Tafari Makanan, born July 23, 1892, near Herer, Ethiopia, and died August 27, 1975, Emperor of Ethiopia from 1930 to 1974, who sought to modernize his country and who steered it into the mainstream of post-World War, the second African politics. He brought Ethiopia into the League of Nations and the United Nations and made Addis Ababa the major center for the Organization of African Unity, now African Union. Tafari was a great-grandson of Saul Selassie of Shua Shou and a son of Ras Prince Makanan, a chief advisor to Emperor Menelik II. Educated at home by French missionaries, Tafari at an early age favorably impressed the emperor with his intellectual abilities and was promoted accordingly. He pursued progressive policies when serving as the governor of Sadamo and later Hera province. He aimed to weaken the local nobility's feudal hold on power by strengthening the central administration, for instance, by creating a civil service with salaries. As a result, he came to stand for politically liberal segments of society. He wed Wazaro Menon, Menelik II's great-granddaughter, in 1911. When Menelik II passed away in 1913, his grandson Lij Yasu ascended to the throne, but the majority of Ethiopians, who were Christians, found him to be unreliable and closely associated with Islam. Tafari became the center of the Christian uprising, and in 1916 he toppled Lij Yasu. Zadatu, Menelik II's daughter, thereupon became empress in 1917, and Raz Tafari was named regent and heir apparent to the throne. Raz Tafari, a progressive figure who became the focal point of the goals of the younger modernist age, contrasted with Zadatu's conservative viewpoint. He achieved a notable victory in 1923 when Ethiopia was admitted to the League of Nations. The next year, he made the first ever trip outside of Ethiopia, traveling to Jerusalem, Rome, Paris, and London. Following the death of Zadatu two years later, on November 2, 1930, he was crowned emperor and given the name Hale Selassie, meaning Might of the Trinity. He had already accepted the title of Negus, meaning King. He published a new constitution in 1931 that severely curtailed the authority of parliament. From the late 1920s on, Hale Selassie in effect was the Ethiopian government and by establishing provincial schools, strengthening the police forces, and progressively outlawing feudal taxation, he sought to both help his people and increase the authority of the central government. Hale Selassie led the struggle against the Italian invasion of Ethiopia in 1935, but he was driven into exile in May 1936. On June 30, 1936, he addressed the League of Nations in Geneva and made an emotional plea for assistance. When World War II broke out, he was able to form an army of exiled Ethiopians in the Sudan with the help of the British. Invading Ethiopia in January 1941, 
British and Ethiopian forces took Addis Ababa back a few months later. Despite being restored to his position as emperor, Hale Selassie had to regain the power he had previously held. He once more carried out social, economic, and educational reforms in an effort to slowly and gradually modernize Ethiopian government and society. The Ethiopian government continued to be largely the expression of Hale Selassie's personal authority. In 1955, he granted a new constitution, giving him as much power as the previous one. Overt opposition to his rule surfaced in December 1960, when a dissident wing of the army secured control of Addis Ababa and was dislodged only after a sharp engagement with loyalist elements. The creation of the Organization of African Unity in 1963 was greatly aided by Hale Selassie. He ruled Ethiopia until 1974, when drought, growing unemployment, and his government's political gridlock led to insurrection among some of the army. They overthrew Hale Selassie and installed the Marxist-leaning Derg as a military dictatorship in place of a constitutional one. Hale Selassie lived the rest of his life in his own castle while under house arrest. Official sources at the time claimed his death was due to natural causes, but later evidence showed that he had likely been strangled on the military government's orders. As the messiah of all black people, Hale Selassie was revered by the Rastafarian movement. Due to Hale Selassie's internationalist ideas, Ethiopia was admitted as a founding member of the UN. He oversaw the Organization of African Unity's creation in 1963 and served as its first chairman. This organization was the forerunner to the African Union. He was toppled in a military coup in 1974 by the Dirk, a Marxist-Leninist Trunta. On August 27, 1975, Hale Selassie was assassinated. Some historians have criticized him for quelling uprisings among the landed nobility the Mesophine, who continuously rejected his reforms. Others have criticized Ethiopia for not modernizing quickly enough. The Harari people suffered under his leadership, and many left the Harari region. Human rights organizations like Human Rights Watch have criticized his government for being undemocratic and tyrannical. There was never a formal law or government policy that criminalized any language, despite some sources claiming that late in his rule, the Oromo language was outlawed from education, public speaking, and use in administration. Numerous Amharas were moved to southern Ethiopia by the Hale Selassie government, where they worked in the judiciary, government, and churches. After Hacholu Hundesa passed away in June 2020, Oromo demonstrators demolished the statue of Hale Selassie in London's Kanazoro Park, and his father's equestrian monument was taken down in Harar. The internal politics of Hale Selassie's nation were a major source of opposition. While Hale Selassie attempted to modernize the nation and elevate it to a position of worldwide influence following Italy's occupation in 1936 to 1941, the subsequent government was faced with opposition from the general public, particularly among peasants and those with higher education. Between 1960 and the revolution of 1974, there were several coup attempts to topple the Hale Selassie administration. The overtaxing system in Gojim since 1930, the famines in Wallo and Tigray from 1958, and the autocratic land seizure are some of the most infamous acts that damaged Hale Selassie's reputation. At Addis Ababa University, the first student movements for the elimination of feudalism and land redistribution in the Ethiopian Empire took place in 1965. The Eritrean War of Independence, which sought Eritrea's independence from the Ethiopian imperial government, is another aspect. After regaining the throne after Italy's conquest of Ethiopia from 1936 to 1941, Hale Selassie became well-known around the world by actively supporting African decolonization during the Cold War. He made a substantial contribution to putting Ethiopia in a favorable strategic position in the Suez Canal, where it was pitted against the Soviet Union, the United States, and Yugoslavia's non-aligned government.
Additionally, Addis Ababa was selected to host the Organization of African Unity OAU in 1963 and the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa UNECA headquarters in 1958, which culminated in a momentous moment in the middle of the 1960s. In Addis Ababa on December 13, 1960, a military coup d'etat occurred at Cunet Luo Palace while Hale Selassie was returning from an official visit to Brazil. The deadly coup was coordinated in the capital city until the 1974 revolution. This coup considered the initial point of student movements. The situation in Ethiopia had gotten worse by the 1970s, with unemployment rising and the government unable to address the issues facing the nation. Selassie's suzerainty was threatened. He lost control of his army when many soldiers quit due to insufficient pay. He was overthrown from power in a coup as a result of this weakening his defense. He endured house imprisonment right up to his passing in 1975. The reason of death remained in question. Some stories said he had passed away naturally, while others said he had likely been strangled to death on government orders. In 1992, his skeletal remains were located. In the Trinity Cathedral in Addis Abeba, he was given a respectable funeral in November 2000. 